The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was uh, saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that there may be life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Christ. Wow. Well, I always love the Good Shepherd text. I know uh, we have it a couple times, I believe, different points of the year. But what's wonderful about having it in Easter is when we think about those, uh, those disciples, those apostles that the Lord commissioned. And, you know, mind you that they have seen who knows how many umpteen miracles Jesus performed. Some probably who knows that weren't even covered in uh, the scriptures that we have today. Uh, and they were, they were still probably kind of in awe with their chin dropped down to the floor. And a lot of times, too, uh, Jesus was really trying to get them to think about who he is, what his role is in their heart, and to be in their life. And I must confess, I have had moments like that myself. I have read many profound, beautifully written books about the Holy Spirit, about the church, about discipleship, about agape love. And I'm like, okay, I need to chew on that again. And, you know, uh, there's been criticism with John that, you know, he, he kind of makes the disciples sound kind of dense, you know, because Jesus is like, okay, I've got to come up with saying something here to get them to understand I am the way, I am the way to that true life, that truly being alive, that flourishing as God's creation. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Can you just imagine <clears throat> If you were there, we, uh, we have pictures in our mind of seeing the Lord with his disciples. We have seen many paintings in art <coughs> of uh, Jesus with his disciples and scenes of his miracles and scenes of him be delivering parables and so on and so forth. But again, <coughs> do we need... Do we need that? Do we feel like we need to really be there? And I say, yeah, we always have that Thomas thing going on. We have that Thomas thing in the sense where I want to hear the words from his mouth. I want to see his face. Uh, I really think so many things in our lives are revealed to us especially when we really take that pioneering spirit, when we live into making dreams possibilities. Those have become beautiful words of poetry, haven't they? Dream. Dream it, live it, do it, be it. Where, you know, we see it as, uh, we reduce it down to being just happy statements to boost the spirit. No. Why don't we take that as a truth? Like he was trying to get them to think about 
He is God. He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is the voice and the path to God. And that the words that they're hearing in their ears is God speaking to help them, to develop them. I, I must confess, I find the um, snippet from Acts we have today a little bit sad. Because it sounds like all the ideals of the church that have uh, sort of disappeared. That fire, that being on fire, that feeling the flame of Pentecost that we'll hear about in another couple weeks. On, not on top of our heads, but more a fire in the heart where we're, we're living. We are living being church. We are a living body. I, um, I love studying uh, the scriptures with a dear pastor friend of mine. And, you know, we talked about that. You know, maybe the worst thing to happen to the church was being institutionalized. I mean, yes, we credit Constantine, the Emperor Constantine, in the, uh, the, the, the fourth century for doing uh, an amazing thing for establishing the Holy Roman Empire where, you know, the church then did have big cathedrals and many things begin. But that early church fire is something that kind of got lost in that. And then now we're kind of seeing that, or we're kind of forced into the situation by, well, everybody in isolation waiting for this pandemic to be cured. And we pray for that. We pray for hopefulness. We pray for people to stop despairing. And, you know, so many things each week, every single day I'm praying about. I mean, this is in my living room. And I have always had a house church uh, since I was ordained. And I served in uh, churches that started that way. And actually, one of the things that warmed my heart when I was looking at both Acts and Peter here is uh, remembering way in the beginning, uh, and I uh, believe was part of 2012, where... Um, we started meeting in someone's dining room. A whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of people of great faith. We're like, we gotta plant a church. We're gonna do it. And we're like, well, you know, how do we get this going? What are we gonna need? What are we gonna do? And it's like, they needed a space, rent a hotel room. That's where it began. And the house churches began like, well, let's have it over at uh, James's house, or let's have it over here. And you can imagine now Paul out there and all the people kind of going through Asia Minor and about. And like, those little churches, those little tiny congregations were all in some senses, like house churches, they were. There was no little building like we think of. I mean, some of them were in caves. And, but there was that fire there. There was that passion there. We can do this. I mean, not too common to be renting a, 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 a hotel um, conference room. But that's where the first church plant I served at was uh, based through. And I even won scholarships for church planting and helping with that. But enough about me. I think this teaches us something. These lessons, thinking of, of Jesus as that gate. Jesus also, that gate in our hearts. He's also that gate in our hearts. He, he opens, he opens that door and he, he wants us to be open. He wants us to see beyond ourselves. He wants us to become fully alive. And um, if any of you were 
able to see articles last this uh, the other day. I was blessed to have the time and inspiration to uh, let the Holy Spirit write an article on um, a wonderful read I just finished called Alive in Christ uh, by Maxine Dunham. Uh, excellent book. So many things to think about about what Luther had said in some senses to get us to think about the little Christ, the little Christ in here, the person of the Holy Spirit. What I love about Peter's reading here today is when he, he again tells parts of the gospel story and gets us to think about getting into focus here. Yeah. By his wounds you have been healed. We have been healed. We have been healed by our crucified and risen Lord. And we are a resurrection people because we may have been going astray, but now we are returning. We are returning to uh, when we are disciplined, allowing the shepherd to lead us and guide us. I um, and and following following that discipline of staying true to the path of God's word. There's lots of voices that we hear. As I've said before, I love Groucho Marx's statement. I don't want to be in any kind of club that would have me as a member. When the world says no, God says yes. And that is that motivation, that is that fire of God to make you make visions, to make dreams a reality, to be all you can be through Christ. Whatever kind of ministry that your life is doing, because we are all a part of the priesthood of all believers. We all have a ministry, a ministry of caring for our family, a ministry of tending for the earth, caring for things, caring for our garden. I uh, was having fun the other day walking in my backyard. We have two big giant monster trees that no one has pruned probably since 1928. And I'm like, well, they're not really budding yet. But then I've heard the saying, late bloomers. And uh, my friend was telling me, you have to get a little spike. You have to feed it. You have to feed the tree. You can't tend to the tree. I'm like, I have a brown thumb with that kind of gardening. But then I was thinking about it. You know, poor Mr. Tree. I mean, I... Uh, Hope I can help it, uh, you know, be, uh, do, do a little bit better. Not just because it would probably make our yard look a little bit better to have, you know, not this just this big giant mass of branches, but have beautiful leaves on it. But I thought about the tree. Yeah, it's just little tiny things like that. That's being a steward. That's being a steward of creation. That's acknowledging and realizing the life within, you're a part of creation. You, you have gone through that gate. You have, you have been led by the shepherd. And then you see and you begin to think about, what more can I do? We are in the trenches of the, of the world, but we are to do battle. I still have this image out. <laughs> As I, I think I mentioned a couple sermons ago, um, I, I photoshopped my face into Eowyn's um, uh, warrior uh, armor, thinking about spiritual warfare, because a lot of that is what this is. Even Jesus is saying this here. We could be led astray by lots of voices out there, we can fall away from being and doing church. 
which the first church is here. The tabernacle of the Holy Spirit is in the heart, the seat of the soul, the foundation of self, personhood, that you have been created. You have been created by God to be fully alive. And I love being led. I love being led by the good and beautiful shepherd. I uh, have, I had my graduation from, uh, from the School of the Art Institute a uh, hundred years ago in 19, 1991, or 92, yeah, it was 92. And this big giant picture frame, that was a horizontal picture frame, it was like this big. Um, I, I had it in that for years, all these pictures, all these different pictures of my graduation and uh, et cetera. And then it was like when I moved out to Las Vegas, I decided the pictures and the tape were getting really bad and starting to fall out. I decided to take it out because my friend gave me a beautiful picture of the shepherd. And then I, why I'm, I'm relaying this right now is, you know, obviously I had to orient the picture frame in a, horse, uh, a vertical fashion. And then I thought about that, that relationship with God, that vertical relationship. And in the world, we are horizontal. We, we, we live into a, a cross-shaped discipleship. We, we believe, we receive, we incorporate, and we share. And I still see the pictures I had from my graduation there, too. i got to get a new frame or do something with it. <laughs> but it just made me think about life. And that was even before I found God back in my life, before my conversion experience. Is, you know, I was in this dimension. I was really in the world. But then I brought it back in focus with the Good Shepherd. I challenge all of you to think of these Sundays and Easter as that shaping, that shaping of your soul to be led and fed, to flourish and become truly alive, to enter into that gate that the Lord presents. Let us pray. Loving, gracious Lord Jesus, there are so many things that you give us. There are so many things that you bless us with. Mm -hmm. We are blessed to see your face uh, in our mind's eye, in our heart's eyes. We are blessed to hear your voice and, and fight that uh, battle, that daily battle between uh, uh, the voices of the world and, and uh uh, the voices of the evil one and, and things that drag us down. You keep making us strong. You help us to get that fire. You help us to think about that fire that the early church had and that we gotta re we have to restore. We have to regain that. We need to be a fire and we need to be truly alive. In your most precious name we pray. Amen. <laughs>